Hi, I'm Mandy Irby. I am a labor and delivery nurse. I am certified in inpatient OB and electronic fetal monitoring. And I am in love with these. These are peanut balls. They are from Premier Birth Tools and they are my favorite new tool on labor and delivery. I'm excited to show you a few of my favorite positions that I help women in every day in labor that help expedite their labor. The research on the Premier Birth Tools website shows that peanut balls are used to shorten the length of labor and I've seen it and it's amazing. So a few of my favorite positions. I'm also gonna give you a few tips on how to expertly position a laboring woman according to the fetal station so that you can help her and her baby, mostly her baby, move the most efficiently through the pelvis, which is how labor happens and it's how we shorten it. So there are some really great tips. These are hospital grade, latex free, burst resistant. They're the only kind you need in the hospital. I'm gonna to refer to them as small, medium, large, and extra large. But for your understanding, they are 40 centimeters, 50 centimeters, 60, and 70 in the largest. These are the four sizes from Premier Birth Tools. Premier Birth Tools is an awesome website. They give you the ability to purchase a peanut ball, all of the training that you need to use it. And in my hospital, we really love these position charts. We put them on a little ring and hang them at the nurse's station. And they are a great go-to for positioning, sizing for our patients. They help us remember certain positions for certain difficulties through labor. And they're super easy, super colorful and laminated. So they're gonna last forever. We love them. The way we take care of our peanut balls, we cover them with a patient gown to help protect our patients and to keep them a little cleaner. And when we clean them, when we clean them after each patient, we do not use bleach. We use these sandy wipes. So just the purple wipes and don't keep them in the sun, don't keep them in a windowsill and keep them off the floor. I have a friend helping me. Her name is Kristen. She is 38 weeks pregnant. She is five feet, five inches tall. And I'm gonna show you how Size matters when it comes to peanut balls. There is not one size fits all for the position or for the mom. So we're gonna run through positions for each size peanut ball for my friend Kristen. Kristen is in our first position, which is the semi-sitting lunge. We are using the small peanut ball for her and we got her in this position. She said it was super comfortable. So this is where her knee is most comfortable facing the ceiling almost straight and where you can't see her other knee is facing the wall. So after about 30 or 45 minutes, she's going to need to pee. She's going to need to get up, change positions. We're just going to switch legs. So in this scenario, Kristen is in early labor. She's sitting without an epidural. This is a great position for external rotation, meaning we need the baby to get into the top of the pelvis. So her baby is minus three, minus two station, and she's chilling. She's just watching TV. This is comfortable for her, but it's doing a lunge while she's in bed. Amazing. All right, our second position, Kristen is in a sideline position, and we're gonna show you a few things like this. First, she's using the small ball. She is 5'5", and this worked for our semi-sitting lunge. But I just have a feeling that we need a bigger size. She says that it's okay, comfort-wise. So let's take this out and try the medium. How does that feel? Much more comfortable. More comfortable, okay. Normally, you'll find that a sideline position requires a bigger ball. So this is the blue size ball. This is a medium. And this is great for resting or for after an epidural where she's already in bed. It helps open the pelvis. And I don't want her holding her hip. So I like to put a stirrup so that she can't move or feel like she has to hold the ball in place. It's more comfortable. We're gonna go from a sideline to a tuck position. So you're gonna take your legs and make them parallel and then Kristen is gonna pull the ball towards her face and turn more onto her side. There. And my little secret is 
A lot of times while people are sleeping, especially if they have an epidural, they like to roll backwards. So I put a little towel under their hip to keep it comfortable, but to give them a little support back here so they stay onto their side. So as she pulls the ball towards her face, this is a very, very wide position for her hips and for her pelvis. This is a great position for mid station, so zero station, or if we want to go a little further, we'll take uh, another little roll and turn it into internal rotation. All we do is lift her ankle and lift her foot just slightly. This is now opening the bottom of her pelvis. So if she were laboring down or near the end of labor and needing the baby to go from zero to plus one or plus two, this is the position I would choose for most people that can't get into another position because of an epidural. It's very comfortable, it's very restful, it's very wide for her pelvis, it's like a squat, but it's opening the bottom of her pelvis. This tuck position is also awesome for pushing. She can pull the ball just like she did when she pulled up into tuck while she's pushing, keep her leg rested, or she can bring her leg up herself and rest on the ball in between contractions. Now for Kristen's personal favorite position. This is just a leaning forward position. Awesome for resting if you don't have an epidural or if the mother doesn't have an epidural. Possible if she does have an epidural with some help. She is just leaning over the large size peanut ball, the red ball. This is an external rotation position to help the baby through the top of the pelvis. Remember, minus two station. But if she opens her feet and spreads her ankles out a little wider than her knees. It's just a very small adjustment. She is an internal rotation. So this would be a great position for pushing or for laboring down if you're waiting for the baby to go through the bottom of the pelvis. It also gives great access for her back and hangs her belly if she's having back discomfort. Okay, we've put Kristen in a kneeling lunge position. It's also like a fire hydrant position. She has one leg up over this large red ball one knee is supported on the bed and she's hugging the small green ball. When we first started this position, we gave her the medium ball under this left hip and she said it was cramping her hip. So that was an indication to me that we were using the wrong size. Super easy, I just listened and we went up a size. She's able to really rest on this larger ball. This is also supported with a stirrup because she said that it was wobbly and I don't want her to have to hold her hip in place. I need it to be relaxed. This is really good for a mid pelvis position, just getting the baby down into the pelvis and helping her hang her belly. Also gives me access to her back in case she's having any back discomfort. She should be supported by someone at the bedside the entire time she's in this position. It is possible to use this position with an epidural. It's just a little trickier. Kristen is now on the extra large peanut ball and she is sitting. This is the only ball that you can sit on. So she likes this position because she has a lot more mobility, even though it's low to the ground and it kind of strains on her knees. She needs help getting in and out of this position, but she's able to go forward and backward. She's able to rock side to side and she's getting extra support because of this rebozo or this sheet on the bed. If she were in later labor and we needed an internal rotation to help move the baby through the bottom of the pelvis, she would just put her feet out in front of her and help open that bottom of the pelvis. It may just also feel good on her back to go back and forth. We have access to her back in this position. She's able to lean and hang her belly, which is comfortable. We want to keep her safe, so we put her in shoes, but your patients should wear those non-slip socks if at all possible just because they have so much movement in this ball it helps them to get in and out of this position a little safer hey thank you so much for watching i hope you got a few tips and tricks that you can use with your peanut balls be sure to go to premierbirthtools.com where sherry and her team are awesome these are the best peanut balls that you can find and as sherry says give birth with balls <laughs>